So let's talk about the heart of our daily analysis, the center of our data universe, statistical clinical trial recruitment funnel. Once again, this is something you've spent time designing. It's something that you know, like the back of your hand, how someone becomes aware of your clinical trials and every step that they would potentially need to take to get enrolled in your clinical trial. Here's how we divide it up though in our analysis under our Clara framework. And I'll say this with a caveat that every clinical trial, of course, is quite different in design. Maybe you have three screening appointments. Maybe you have none. Maybe you have one consent appointment or maybe it requires three. Whatever the case might be, ensure that you're capturing each step and accounting for every single moment that a patient needs to graduate from one step to the next and get that down on paper and analyze it on a day-to-day -day basis. It will yield so many opportunities for optimizations uh, down the road. But let's talk about the way we think about clinical trial recruitment funnels, starting at the top, which is impression. Impression's just an old advertising term. It's uh, the awareness that you build. It's the number of people that you spread your message to who hear your message, receive your message. In our case, we run a lot of pretty sophisticated digital ads. And the big benefit of digital is precision, not just in targeting, but in reporting. So I know on a day-to-day -day basis for any clinical trial that I work with, uh, what's happening in terms of impressions. I know down to the single digit how many impressions I want, not just on a day-to-day -day basis, but on an hour-to-hour -hour basis. So make sure you're counting impressions accurately as possible. You might not be buying just digital ads, many clinical trials uh, choose to buy traditional ads as well. So everything from newspaper ads all the way up to billboards, that is traditional media. And those vendors in this day and age are fortunately able to turn around pretty good estimates of the daily reach that you ought to have with your media buy. So if you're buying a billboard or a park bench ad or a subway ad, work with your vendor to get that impression estimate and divide it up across the days that you're buying the ad for and make sure that you're accounting for it day to day. It will make the rest of your calculations and the companion measures uh, flow so much easier if you have an accurate top of funnel count. Now visit isn't necessarily a visit to your clinical trial site just yet. It's a visit to some online portal that you've set up. 21st century patients demand 21st century 21st century service, and they prefer to do things online. So make sure that your landing page is able to turn around visit counts for you so that you have an accurate understanding, an accurate barometer as to what traffic is coming in. At Clara, we spin up our own landing pages. And again, that gives us the precision of doing almost on an hour to hour basis what's going on in terms of visits. But any IT company will at least be able to get you a day-to-day -day measure. So ask for that and ask for that reporting regularly and make sure that you're counting for it. Again, it's only by setting up the top of your funnel that you can calculate all the other stuff that you need to optimize your recruitment effort. Lead, if impression is an old advertising term, lead is an old sales term. Lead just simply refers to anyone who says, hey, I'm interested. Here's my contact information, get back to me. So that's a lead. Make sure that you're counting leads as well as you possibly can. It might be 90% uh, of people coming in through your landing page and saying, hey, I'm interested and I found the contact module at the bottom of this page and here I am filling it out. And it might be 10% people who are coming in via email or phone call because they saw you on a billboard somewhere. In either case, capture that lead information holistically, get every channel from email, phone call, text message, fax to digital, consolidate all of them so that you have an accurate measure. Same thing holds true for pre-screen. So a pre-screen completion is uh, anyone who's obviously completed a pre-screener and that can also come through a lot of different channels. It might not be that a majority of your pre-screeners are administered online, but that a majority are administered with someone on your team walking the patient through a survey over the phone. Whatever the case might be, make sure that you're capturing all those channels in your analysis. And from there, it cascades down to passing, 
your pre-screener to consenting, screening, and enrolling. Again, this is about where the water starts to get murky uh, across the industry. It's because every clinical trial is so different. Make sure that you're accounting for every step. If there are three screening appointments that a patient needs to go to, write out screener one, screener two, screener three, and track those on a day-to-day -day basis. Because when you start looking at the secondary companion measure of conversion rates, and when you start looking at heat maps and response times to diagnose what might be happening in your funnel, all that separation of data, all that uh, granularity is only going to yield good things for you down the road. It's gonna empower you and your team to make the quick adjustments that you need to to make sure that your funnel is optimized. So that's the heart of it. It's just a recruitment funnel all the way from awareness down to enrollment. So let's talk then about one of the companion measure sets, which are conversion rates. 